Alrighty, everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is lesson five uh, of our quadratic series for Math 20-1. Uh, you'll find all the links, just like usual, in, uh, in the descriptions. You can get a blank copy, you can get the solutions if you just want to try some things. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get into it. We'll talk about stretches and reflections in this one. Uh, last time we talked about translation, so either moving left, right, or up, down, around our plane. Um, so let's just see if we can graph these uh, first, just like we've done in the past. Um, so x squared is just our base quadratic function. Uh, so I'm going to graph uh, that one, so x squared. Uh, and then in y2, uh, I'm going to change that line to a bolded one, so we just we can really see the difference. And then we can put in our x squared uh, plus 2x plus 1. And hit graph, we should see a couple. So there's the original one. And here's our new one, right? Our x squared plus 2x plus 1. And if I compare it to the original one, well, really what it looks like is it's moved left a little bit. Uh, it looks like it's moved left uh, one unit here. Um, so we'll just, you know, give ourselves a little quick sketch uh, of what it may look like. So here's just our, I'll give us, you know, an axis to talk about. So there we go. Uh, here's the original one something like this right, so here's the original y equals x squared uh, the new one looks like uh, well it looks like our vertex point the peak there uh, is 1 over so it looks like everything kind of just got moved slightly So here's our y equals x squared plus 2x plus 1, right? There's really what it kind of looks like. If you try the same thing for the one beside it, uh, we'll think about graphing y equals negative x squared and y equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 1. And here's the original now, but things have changed uh, a little bit. So now my original one, uh, well, it's flipped upside down. Really, it's like the mirror image um, of the original one. So we'll just draw it out here first. So here's going to be um, our, you know, x squared kind of graph, but upside down this time. So the direction it opens up is now reverse. It just gets flipped over that x axis line. And so I guess I'll label this. There's negative x squared. Uh, the new one now uh, looks like we've got a vertex at uh, 1, 2, uh, and really just the shape of it looks something like this. Not perfect, but uh, it just gives us the shape of it. So there's y equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 1. Um, so we'll talk about all the features here, but really the one thing that got changed is the sign that was in front of the squared term. Um, and if you think about the graphical equations, or the graphical representation to the equation, um, well, the one thing that's different, um, there's a negative in front of the squared term. Right, that was the only thing that changed, and it really made a big difference in what the graphs were going to look like. Um, so for us, that number in front of our squared term has a big, big, big effect on what that graph's going to look like. Uh, and we can talk about them as being a vertical stretch. Now, the number that we had there before was just 1, but the sign was different. I had positives and negatives. Um, but if that's going to be you know, a number other than 1, um, the example here is 2. Uh, well, every y value now is getting 2 times greater than it was before. So you can think about the graph as being just pulled um, vertically, right? So this point, um, which I guess I'll do in a different color here, this point in green uh, on the right side of this parabola, well, it now is just uh, being doubled. It, it, it's now a y value that's two times greater than it was before um, because you can think of this equation like being y equals 2x squared. Um, so if that y value happens to be somewhere around 8, uh, well, now the new value is going to be somewhere around 16, twice as big as it was before. And that happens to every single y value, which makes the graph look uh, like it's being stretched in that vertical direction. It looks more narrow uh, than it did originally. 
Now the same thing is true on the other side of things. Well, what happens if it's not a whole number? Maybe it's a fraction, right? Maybe it's a half, for example. So let's say y is 1 half x squared. Well, now every y value is half as big as it was before. And it looks like your graph is being squished. Some sources call it a compression. This one says that it's compressed vertically. Some also still call it a stretch, but the stretch factor is different. Right? So you could, could describe this as being a vertical stretch by a factor of a half. Some places say uh, compression. Some sources say shrink. There's a lot of different words for this. But now we've got three different kinds of transformations. Right? We've got stretches, we've got reflections, we've got translations. And unless you're otherwise told, that's going to be the order you go in. Uh, and the way you can remember this, um, if you're not told what they are, um, just think about what you do in the morning as part of your routine. As soon as you get out of bed, you probably have a little bit of a stretch, get your arms and legs moving. You make your way into the bathroom, make sure you look okay, you look at your reflection in the mirror before you make out, um, make out the door um, to translate or move uh, your way to school or work or wherever it is you're going. So stretch first, then reflection, then translation. Um, so you can describe how these graphs are related. Uh, and I, I, We won't draw them, uh, but coming up with the transformation is important. So we'll do that for each of them. Um, so for A, we've got a vertical stretch um, by a factor of a third. Right? So there's how we could describe it in words. And I know that because this is compared um, to our original graph of y equals x squared. But now I've got a factor in front, the, that a number, the number in front of our squared terms one third. So I know our, com our vertical stretch by a factor of a third. For b, there's two transformations happening. Um, so I look for the stretch first. I don't really see a number. Really, it's much minus one. Now the negative is going to control whether or not it's right side up or upside down. So that's going to be our reflection. So there's a reflection over the x-axis. And it's always going to be over the x-axis. It won't be over the y-axis because really what that looks like, um, it really just looks like a transformation, a translation left or right. If you think about switching it around the y-axis, it kind of just rotates vertically, right? which is really the same thing as moving it around. But really, the direction it opens, if you think of it being my fingertips, well, that really changes over the x-axis, the horizontal. It's so always over the x. Now that I've got that one, We'll move it four units, um, so that's a vertical translation of four units up. If you think about C, well, there's all kinds of transformations happening to it, so we'll stretch first. So vertical stretch by a factor of five. a factor of 5 because there's my number to tell me so right that 5 tells me there's a stretch the negative says that there's a reflection and the other two numbers the one attached to X remember tells us a horizontal translation Now the order you translate doesn't matter the other ones do make a big difference Horizontal translation, two units to the left. Remember, the sign is going to be opposite for those x's. So since it looks like a positive 2, really what we've put in is a negative 2 to make it. So, so we're going left. Uh, then a vertical translation uh, six units downward. Since that number, that constant is minus six, we've moved the whole thing six down. So we can do a, a good four transformations to this, which will alter our graph from our original. Now what we're able to do is you can pick out a lot of these things without even drawing the picture. Just by looking at the equation, I know a few things. We'll determine all of these before we graph it. So if I think about the direction this opens, the negative sign is going to be the giveaway, and since it's a negative, I know that it's reflected, so I know it's going to open downwards and point down to the bottom. If I look at the equation, I also know a vertex, 
and my coordinates are going to be minus 2, minus 3. Right? The 2 and 3 will tell me so. And again, it's the, the 2 that's going to be backwards because it's with the, with the x. The equation of the axis of symmetry, that one's always going to come from your x coordinate of your vertex. Right? It's the symmetry line that goes through the middle. So I know it's x is equal to minus 2, the vertical line that cuts it. Now think about the intercepts here for a second. If my vertex is in um, you know, quadrant number three, where I've got an x that's negative and a y that's negative, and it also opens downwards, I'm not gonna have any x-intercepts. It won't cross it. If you think about the geometry of this, the shape of it, um, we're gonna say that there are no x-intercepts. Right? Because, well, there won't be any. It won't cross the x-axis. If you think about the y-intercepts, you can solve for it if we let x equal 0. Every y-intercept has the same thing in common. The x-coordinates are 0. So here's our equation. Um, y equals negative 2 x plus 2 squared minus 3. So I'll zoom in here. Make that a bit smaller. Give us some space. Okay, so if we make x 0, the only variable we've got left to deal with is y. So I can solve this pretty easily. So 0 plus 2 is 2, squared is 4, 4 multiplies with negative 2 to give you negative 8. still have a minus 3 to take care of, so I know my y-intercept is negative 11. So therefore, as a coordinate point, it's 0, negative 11. So you can plot it on here. Now this only goes up to 9, uh, so i got to make a little bit of a guess. So somewhere down here, I'm going to say that's negative 11. Um, so I know where the y-intercept is. I know there's no x-intercepts. I know I have a vertex at negative 2, negative 3, so right about there. And I know it opens downwards. So if I'm just going to draw it, well, I know it's going to look something like this and it's not perfect but there's the general shape of it if you think about the domain and range I can take any x value I want so x can be the set of any real number but for the y values right, the range um, has a maximum value of minus 3 there's nothing above that y value of minus 3 everything's below it so as long as y is less than or equal to negative 3 y can be anything else Okay, and we've got our picture there as well. Even if you graph it, you can be sure and that it looks the same. So negative 2 brackets x plus 2 squared, oops, squared minus 3. And then there's the graph. And it should be right over here like we said. So there it is. Right? It's going to look basically the same. I won't see that y-intercept because my window only goes up to minus 10. So if you make it negative 15, for example, it should be right around here, and you'll see it cross. Okay, so the same sort of picture, mine just obviously isn't as pretty. You can find the same sorts of information for the one underneath. So direction of opening this time is upwards, because I know this is a positive, so I know it opens up. Vertex you can find as well, it's 3, 1 this time. Now if it opens up, and my vertex is at 3, 1, I still know there's going to be no x-intercepts right now, right? Because it's going to look something like this, um, where it'll cross. It won't cross the x-axis. It will have a y-intercept, but not an x. So my symmetry line is x equals to 3. Right? So down the center, it'll go through that vertex. So right through this point, there's my symmetry line. The intercepts. Well, we said already that there's no x-intercepts. If, again, you let x equal 0, um, you can solve for the y-intercept. So I think it was 1 over 4. Um, x minus 3 squared plus 1. So there it is. And we'll give ourselves a little bit of space. So if you make x 0 again, oops, um, you'll have your y being equal to 1 over 4, 0 minus 3 squared plus 1. Um, negative 3 gets squared, you get 9, that's 9 over 4, 
and we'll add a 1 to it, so 13 over 4 is what that works out to be. And as a decimal, like I don't really like using the decimals, but just in terms of graphing it, um, makes it a bit easier to estimate. So 3 and a quarter, we can plot our y-intercept, so just a little bit over 3. There it is, so it, it's at 0, 13 over 4. So now I've got enough to graph this something like this and symmetrical around the other side so just a little sketch just to see the shape so no x-intercepts again um, domain and range x was always gonna work for us so any real number is fine for the y's this time we've got a minimum value right it goes down to this lowest value of 1 so everything else is greater than or equal to 1 y is any real number outside of that. So there's my picture and again you can graph it just to check to make sure that you've done this correctly. Um, so we'll put our fraction, our compression value, our stretch in brackets because it's a fraction it kind of messes some things up sometimes. Um, so x minus 3 squared plus 1 graphs. Right over here is where it should be just like we said and you can see how flat it actually is. Um, compared to if I were to graph um, just x squared, you'll see x squared as being a bit more narrow and right around the origin, right? That's its axis of symmetry. So this one's moved over a bit and a bit flatter uh, because we've cut every y value into quarters, right? We made everything a little bit smaller. So it looks a bit more flat. So the more, um, the smaller that fraction is, the flatter you'll see. So if I change this to one over um, 8 instead, you'll see it even look a bit more flat. Right, and you can keep the same pattern going uh, the entire time. Okay, so we've got our stretches, we've got our translations, we've got our reflections, we have all the, the basics um, of our quadratic functions part dealt with, and then this is where the, the series will take a turn, and we'll start to talk about all the equations and more of the algebra parts we can do with this. So again, you'll find all the links in the description, um, and next time uh, we'll really start to get into you know the algebraic forms of this and more of the problem-solving things. So um, check back for the other video, uh, and until then, we'll see you next time.